Hey everybody, welcome to the final episode of my pinball machine collection. Today we're going to take a look at some miscellaneous things. Things that really didn't fit up until this point. There are a handful of games, there are some collectible items and some promotional things, and we even have a couple of things you might not be expecting. <laughs> so why don't we get started right away. Let's start off this miscellaneous tape with Family Guy. This is one of the four machines we're gonna cover real quick, but we're not going to go into a lot of detail. There are reasons why for each one, and I'll get into them as we get to each machine. But first of all, we got Family Guy. Family Guy was released in 2007 by Stern Pinball, and it is probably still one of my favorite Stern Pinball machines. I like a lot of Sterns. But Family Guy has a certain appeal to me. I love the way the machine looks and it's so cartoony and it fits the theme of Family Guy of which I'm a big fan of. The sounds are amazing. The gameplay is a blast. I love the little toys and the little Stewie mini play field up here is just awesome. The reason why I'm not going into much detail with this one is because in 2007, I did an unboxing and total huge review of this particular game, and I went into a lot of detail. So if you look back in my previous uh, videos in my pinball playlist, you will find the Family Guy review. And um, I hope you'll enjoy that. So if you want to hear more about Family Guy, take a look at that. That was about uh, th over three and a half years ago now. and. Wow, about 90 pounds ago. <laughs> so, uh, don't look at the host segments. Anyway, that's Family Guy, so that's why I didn't go into detail on that one. And, here is the second one, Big Bang Bar. This is a very, very interesting machine because this particular one is one of under 200 models ever built. In fact, mine, if you look right here on the plaque, says Big Bang Bar number 34. Chris Bucci's pin. This was hand built for me. Capcom Pinball created this machine. They only made about 12 or so prototypes and then the company closed. Well, fast forward years and years later, the guy who owns all of Capcom parts and all the Capcom name decided he was going to reproduce the game with the existing parts, make some new parts just to complete the run and there are under 200 of them ever made again there's a very interesting story with this particular machine if you look in my pinball playlist you will find a very in-depth review just like with family guy that i did uh, just literally a few months after family guy and it'll tell you everything you need to know there is one really cool thing that I didn't show in the video, and that is my signed Big Bang Bar Translite. This is really, really cool. Friends of mine who were meeting the Capcom team to do an interview got me a Translite signed by the entire team. Everybody who worked on Big Bang Bar and even some that were just part of Capcom. And then I took it with me to the Allentown show in 2007 and had Gene Cunningham and, and his wife sign it as well because they're the ones that got this particular model made. So that's Big Bang Bar, one of the two machines that are up and running, but there's no point in me going into a lot of detail about. So it appears right here in the miscellaneous episode. There are also two games that are in what I call the project stages. As soon as I was done with Diner, of which I still had a couple more things to do, I was going to start on these two games. Here is one of them. This is Pinbot. Pinbot is a great little game. In fact, I used to play it a hell of a lot at Putt Putt Golf and Games, both when it first came out, as well as later on when I used to play Funhouse. Here's actually some video footage of the actual Pinbot that was at Putt Putt Golf and Games that I used to play. So even though I played Funhouse a ton more, Pinbot always appealed to me, and it was one of those games when Williams was really starting to attract me into pinball that I really got interested in. In a nutshell, you have to complete the chest here and it opens up the robot's head. As you can see, the head and face is already opened because I had to do some repair in there and I have it like kind of detached from the base. But normally it closes. You lock the balls in there and then you get multi-ball. And your goal is to, to get it up around this ramp of which this ramp is actually missing. There's supposed to be a blue ramp up here. That's actually missing. I have it in a box over here with all the parts. I had to replace this sun insert in the middle 
I got I removed the mylar and did a little touch up and man it came out nice but I never got quite to finishing it and that was always the next one in line so this is Pinbot I hope at some point to be able to finish this project I love this game and it's definitely one of my older favorites and this is Bonsai Run Ah, Bonsai Run is actually Pat Lawler's first design for Williams, and it is a pretty unique little game if you've ever seen one before. It has pretty much two play fields. If you look here, there's a play field here, the normal sort of pinball area, and then if you look here is another play field at the top, and they're two different kinds of games. You have to spell out the different colors of these racers, yellow, red, and blue, etc. And what that does is it lights them up here on this backboard. Then what you need to do is allow the ball to be picked up here and dropped onto this upper play field, and that's where these flippers kick in. Now the cool part is the ball physics up here are completely different than the ball physics down here. And so you have to learn how to control the ball in two different sorts of situations. And the goal up here is to complete each one of the characters. When you complete them, you defeat them in the race, and that's how you move up in rank. And then eventually you lock a ball up here, and that starts multiplying. Multi-ball, and uh, so the lower playfield is basically used to light the upper playfield, and then multi-ball goes on, and it's really, really fun. We take a look. I even have Pat Lawler's autograph right here on the motocross guy here. There's a lot of work that needs to go into Bonsai Run in order to get this thing up and running. So this was sort of my last project I was going to work on because I knew it would take the most work. See this? Uh, sorry, this game temporarily out of order sign on the on the uh, coin door here. <laughs> this is actually from Putt Putt. A friend of mine uh, gave it to me, and I put it on my games when they're temporarily out of order. Here's the Putt Putt sign that I blacked out of it. <laughs> Those are the two project games in my collection. All right, so we took a look at the four games, and now you have basically seen my entire pinball machine collection as of 2009. 2009 was the year I really didn't do anything with pinball because of other priorities, and obviously I also moved, and my games were put in storage. Some of them I set up here just specifically to film these segments, but that's pretty much my collection, and I hope someday I can restart everything up and keep on going. So those are the games. Now let's get into some miscellaneous crap I have laying around that you might find interesting. Um, look behind me here on the wall, you'll notice literally a bunch of stuff. If you look on a pinball play field, you'll see a lot of plastics around with the lights behind them that have some artwork on it. You've probably heard me say that a lot, the plastics are in good shape or blah blah blah. Well when they used to cut the plastic sets, they used to also sometimes cut out some promotional items, and those are known as promotional plastics. There are keychains, there are uh, speaker cutouts. If you look on the speakers of some of the uh, older grills, you'll notice that there's little cutout plastics, and they used to cut those out and put something promotional on them. Sometimes you find a whole bunch of weird stuff, and that's basically what I mostly have up on this board, are promotional plastics for every single game that I own. Um, I don't, well, there, there are some missing. My, I, I, my whirlwind one are not up here. Uh, some of them are kind of unique though you don't see too often. These are the Adams Family Bugs as they're called. Um, here's the Medieval Madness Catapult set. It actually came like this. You got the catapult and you got all the little things that you could catapult on there and it did actually fling them the way it comes together. I kind of put it together the best I could to show it off there but there's some Medieval Madness stuff. This safe cracker one is actually not too easy to find. These two scared stiff promotional plastics are kind of tough to track down. If you look up here, I also have a scared stiff frog <laughs> that was given away. I think it was given away at a trade show. They were giving away these little frogs similar to the ones on the play field. There's a, a bunch of taxi heads and you can see each one of those is a keychain with each one of the faces. There's a Williams taxi key. Here is a taxi post-it notepad with pen, which I think is really cool. I think that's something you don't see too often. This is also a taxi promotional item. This is a Williams taxi cab hat. It's actually sort of modeled after the taxi cab driver's hat, but you can see it has the Williams logo. I'm actually glad that I got this. I got this way back in the early 90s from a collector, and uh, I'm not sure how many of them are around, but it's pretty cool. Here's something else that's really cool I have hanging here. This is a Medieval Madness shirt. Pinball 
fit for a king. This was given to me by Brian Eddy, who was the designer of Medieval Madness. He was offering them on the Pinball News Group at one time, and I said I had a Medieval Madness, and I got the promotional plastics as well as the shirt. And so this is pretty cool. I like this one. If you take a look right here in this box, you'll see that I actually have in the back here promotional plastics for games I used to own in one form or another. I kept them around, I put them in little baggies because I just wanted to, to hang on to them. They're pretty cool to have. So I got a bunch of stuff from, from past games and, and even some project games. I got a few things sitting in there. So that's pretty much my pinball plastic collection. Now, before we move on to the next actual pinball promotional related thing, I wanna show you this shelf. This Pawtucket Patriot Ale uh, sign was actually given to me by a really good friend of mine, a pinball collector friend of mine named Bruce, and uh, he said it would be great as either a topper or right next to the game, and he's right. When you turn it on, it lights up like crazy, and it's really cool, and it works great sitting right next to Family Guy. And then I have a, a couple of awards I switch out for pinball competitions, but this is something really, really cool, which I know a lot of you who have been listening to my commentaries throughout these episodes have heard a lot about, and that is Putt-Putt Golf and Games. Now I wanna show you this real quick. These are Putt-Putt Golf and Game balls. And how I got them is an interesting story. The Putt-Putt Golf and Games here on the east side that I have mentioned over and over and over again have been closed a long time. I mean, it's been closed a long time. And what they did is they literally knocked over the building and they bulldozed the entire area because they wanted to make room for a credit union, which is there now. Right before they started building, they, they trimmed down all the weeds and all the crap that was there for a long time and had accumulated. And uh, an ex and I were walking around, just kind of checking the place out, saying, oh, I remember when Putt-Putt used to be here. And I was able to find three balls and I, I literally took them, I had gloves and I picked them up with gloves. Then I took them home and I washed them. I cleaned them with Novus and I washed them off. And I don't know, these are three putt-putt balls and uh, they're from the actual putt-putt where I spent God knows how many hours a week playing games and hanging out with friends. And it's a really important place to me. And so believe it or not, these are actually really important to me. And uh, I don't know, as silly as that sounds, this was exciting. So there's a quick look at my balls. <clears throat> Moving on, um, <laughs> if you take a look also next to it here, I have a Pinbot and a high speed game. These are Nintendo Entertainment System cartridges and they actually are translated for the Nintendo versions of the full actual Williams games. Pinbot, of course I own, and this is actually a really good game. I got these as a kid, so this is as a, as a kid. I got these both almost complete. And then high speed is a really great uh, translation also of the original high speed. And that's something I, I keep up here just because it's interesting. A lot of people, believe it or not, who are pinball collectors, but don't know a lot about video games, don't realize that some of this stuff was around. So here's a couple here that were translations, good translations. And then this is totally random, but here's my Ghostbusters car replica that I bought that one time when I found. It's a little die cast uh, replica I keep there because I'm a gigantic Ghostbusters fan. Safe Cracker coin album. What I basically did is I took each one of the Safecracker coins and I put them in here because I found out I had one of each one of the coins that were actually ever out because each one of the Safecracker coins has a design on it. There actually is one called a prototype Safecracker coin. I don't believe I have that one. I, I honestly don't remember, but this is every one of the production Safecracker coins that was released and I polished them up and put them in like this little booklet that I called the coin album and I made a little cover. So that's kind of cool, something to, to hang on to. So this is something completely unrelated, just like the Ghostbusters car, but I have a couple of autographs. This one's probably my most favorite in the world. This is my uh, Rodney Dangerfield autograph. He actually signed it for me on my birthday. And um, I'll never forget that in my life. This is actually a laser disc of the Ladybugs film that he did, but you can see it says to Christopher Rodney Dangerfield. He's one of my idols, so that's really, really cool. This also is really, really cool. I used to be a gigantic Transformers action figure collector. That's a part of my life that's a long time ago, but in 1997, I went to BotCon, which is the Transformers convention, and I got Peter Cullen's autograph, who obviously did the voice of Optimus Prime. This is the Transformers, the movie Laserdisc, 
which uh, was, pretty, it was pretty much the preferred version to get if you were a Transformers fan back in the day in Laserdisc days. And it says, uh, to Chris, Peter Cullen. That's before the movie started coming out and Peter Cullen became more and more accessible and famous. All right, back to some pinball stuff. So we talked about pinball promotional items. There's another thing very similar to that, and that is the promotional flyer. I also collect pinball promotional flyers. I started off by collecting just the ones for the games I own, and then I started branching out and basically collected everything within my area of interest, which is pretty much 1986 and up. And if you take a look here, I have my folders of the flyers. So there's a few missing out of here, but for the most part, you'll get the idea here. These are Williams Games 1986 and up alphanumeric display. And these are Williams Games uh, dot matrix display all the way to the end of the run of Williams. And then in this folder is Data East, Sega, and Stern. In fact, the back I have some Sterns because um, you just keep accumulating them and then I just keep tossing them in the back. But this is pretty much, you know, all the flyers. I'm only missing a handful that I'd like to find uh, at some point. A lot of the ones for games that I own, you'll see actually I have hanging on the walls uh, somewhere in the vicinity of the actual game. Uh, some of them are hanging up, uh, you know, away from them, but I, I like to hang some of the flyers also, you know, just to show them off a little bit, you know, it, it's, it's just, it's good stuff for the walls, you know. Um, Okay, here's an interesting bit of trivia. In the Taxi video, we talked about there were two versions of Taxi, Lola and Marilyn. Here is an original uh, Lola flyer, uh, which are pretty easy to come by. The Lola flyers are easy to come by. The Marilyn Monroe flyers, on the other hand, are not. And if you take a look here outside of my room, Hanging on the wall, you will see an original Marilyn taxi flyer. This is not a copy. This is not a, you know, anything but original. I got it in the mid-90s when I was collecting promotional items for taxi, and I know a lot of people are looking for a Marilyn original flyer, and so I have this one hung up specifically for that reason. I'm, I really, really like this particular flyer. The Pin Game Journal is really pinball's only exclusive magazine. It covers only pinball and it is fantastic. It's edited by Jim Shelberg, who's an enthusiast, a player, a collector, and he really knows how to get in there and get interviews with uh, industry people and people that matter. And the Pin Game Journal is just excellent. And I basically have every issue since the minute I started reading the Pin Game Journal. In fact, my very first issue here is number 44 from April 1996. And what's great about the Pin Game Journal is it's changed over the years. I mean, you could tell like here it started mostly in black and white. And then as time goes on, things started to become color on the cover and a few pages inside. And today we have literally full color issues all the way around. Issue number 99 actually has an article by me. Um, I wrote an article on my first trip to the uh, White Rose Game Room Show. It was my first pinball convention I'd ever been to. And I wrote an article and uh, Jim published it in the magazine. So this one's a little extra special. So I would say if you're interested in pinball at all, whether you're a collector, an enthusiast, I would definitely subscribe to the Pin Game Journal. Okay, so we talked about promotional plastics, promotional flyers, and we still got a couple other things. Here are the promotional posters. <laughs> they also started making some full-size posters for games. Medieval Madness, obviously. On the other side of the door is my No Good Gophers poster. And of course, good old Elvira, Scared Stiff. <laughs> <clears throat> So there's a closer look at some of the posters that I have hanging up around the game room. Now, behind me, over my left shoulder, is the restroom. I wanna show you a couple things in there, so come on. No, it's okay, it's not weird. I'm not gonna show you everything. <laughs> come on. This bathroom area is actually very interesting and important because when I was collecting Transformers action figures at one time, they started out there and then I ran out of room and they started creeping in here. I used to have them on pegs on the wall and I would slowly add them as I kept collecting. Well, obviously as time went on, I stopped collecting. I sold a lot of those off 
and then I had all these holes in the wall. So what I did is I put up movie posters all around the place. There's still a couple Transformers things in here though. Now here's the Transformers comics issue 78 and 80 because I had the entire comic series. And these are actually signed by um, Wildman and Furman, who are two of the guys that worked on it. They were at BotCon. In fact, sitting right here is the Till All R1 CD set signed by Stan Bush, who actually sang the music in the Transformers movie. Man, I was such a nerd. <laughs> Thank God that was in the past, huh? <laughs> Let's talk about some more pinball stuff. Come with me. Now you're probably thinking, why would you show us the bathroom when there's nothing pinball or game room related in there? Ah, but there is. Right in here. We have a bunch of tools. We have soldering stuff. We got a whole bunch of goodies right underneath the sink and behind it here in this cabinet if you open it up, it literally has pinball parts galore. Bulbs, extra parts, polishing equipment. So everything you need to work on the stuff is in these two cabinets. So there was a purpose. <laughs> Let's move on. So this is basically the end of the My Pinball Collection series. But before we close everything out, I thought we would end on a kind of a cool note on something that isn't pinball related but yet is arcade game related and that is my full-size upright Donkey Kong machine. This is actually really really cool because I pretty much with the help of my friend Tom restored this from the ground up and it was the first arcade game I had ever worked on restored whatever. In 2004, Tom helped me track down a couple of uh, arcade blue Nintendo cabinets. Actually, one of them was originally a Donkey Kong, and that's this one. And I went ahead and bought a bunch of reproduction parts. I found a monitor that was in really great shape, and I got a Donkey Kong working board that was in perfect shape. And this is the finished product. I didn't have to do anything to the cabinet. It has a couple of nicks, but it actually stayed in extremely great shape. So I left it alone. I didn't even paint it. But you got a reproduction. Uh, control panel here which looks amazing brand new buttons and joystick and instruction cards this is a brand new reproduction donkey kong marquee which looks awesome and in fact behind there i installed a new fluorescent bulb fixture in the whole thing i did repaint and polish the coin door here so that actually was something i did i polished all those little bolts this is also brand new reproduction wise right here it looks great and the side art which is kind of hard to see from my angle right now is also brand new reproduction side art looks amazing and then of course this team molding here is also new so everything just looked amazing when it was put together I couldn't believe how great it looked I mean it looked as close to new as you're gonna get the monitor doesn't need capped or anything it actually is in really great shape and aside from a couple of other things like a new power supply and cutting a new cardboard black edge around the monitor it just came out amazing so this is my <laughs> original full-size Donkey Kong with the Donkey Kong high score and free play kit installed inside so I hope you all enjoyed the My Pinball Collection series. Thank you very much for watching. This is Chris Bucci saying, keep on flipping.